Friends, uh, I'm honored uh, to get your attention. Uh, I, I'm, I enjoy uh, immensely uh, these mini MOOCs, uh, probability MOOCs. Uh, what is their aim? Their aim is to uncover uh, some uh, applications of probability uh, to real life that so far are not part of the consciousness, and also deb debunk some nonsense. Uh, and of course, uh, people misunderstand both probability and statistics. Statistics is not a discipline that aims at uncovering uh, relationships between items so much as it is uh, about removing noise, removing nonsense, removing uh, BS, uh, cleaning up uh, things from their uh, uh, spurious element and, and showing what is spurious and what's not spurious and what you see particularly that we have a natural tendency to be fooled by relationships and uh, we have an innate of course ability uh, particularly when when academics <laughs> to find relationships that are completely spurious anyway, so this discussion is about correlation hacking uh, when you look at correlation when you hear correlation you got to be suspicious uh, it's very similar to the p-value problem that i have discussed earlier uh, and we're going to see that correlation, sample correlation, or the correlation you see, you observe in a sample, or observed correlation, uh, just like observed mean and sample mean, does not necessarily correspond to the real correlation, the one you would get if you kept repeating the experiment, uh, you kept comparing samples, <coughs> and did that uh, an infinite number of times. So uh, let me start with the problem and let me, let's see how it emerged. It, the thing emerged, I realized the misunderstanding about correlation with a fellow here, his name is uh, something like uh, Spagat, Michael Spagat, and he had been arguing with us uh, along with Steven Pinker, you know, the entertainer, about uh, the wars and incidents of wars. And uh, we found uh, a lot of defects in the study by Pinker, and of course, uh, he didn't understand our insults. <laughs> he still doesn't know that sample mean is different from real mean. So the fellow is coming and criticizing the, our paper because uh, we found we asked Mr. Pinker uh, to try to back up some assertions he made that are statistical and that don't correspond to the text. So they're trying to do the same thing, saying that uh, our uh, statements do not back up to the test, except that. You need to know statistics before making a statement like that. So his first accusation was that something called uh, autoregression function uh, was not what we said it was, and and of course he doesn't know how to read the graph visibly. This scale is from uh, zero to eleven, and then the other is from zero to something like eight. So visibly the, the diagonal is what we showed, and things line up to the diagonal. He was ruled the accusation right after. There's another defect that he showed that we were working with discrete variables, and um, and he uh, compared it to continuous variables, and visibly uh, the two are different, have different um, presentations. But then he discovered that where well, there's something we call the autocorrelation function, uh, he said, oh, look at that, they have some correlations that are non-zero, so uh, how come, uh, you know, they're not discussing these? <laughs> so, this is a story of my life. Um, you don't discuss uh, uh, correlation unless you know there is statistical significance, and let's go through the exercise before getting uh, more technical. I'll do that with Mathematica, and it's a great um, entertaining uh, uh, technique to do so with Mathematica, uh, given that Mathematica... <laughs> Uh, can help you build intuition by generating a random series. Okay, so we do TA1, table 1, equal random variate. Let's say a normal distribution. We have a normal distribution, and let's generate a sample of 18. Okay, we have 18 and TA1. Uh, TA2, table 2. Completely orthogonal, another independent uh, vector of also uh, randomly uh, distributed uh, normal variables. Um, uh, central, uh, you know, uh, in other words, mean, made to have a mean zero, uh, shifted to have a mean zero, and uh, scaled to have a standard deviation of one. So we have TA1 and TA2, and let's do correlation for this run. Correlation, TA1, TA2. 
this will be minus 6, one run, 64%. <laughs> this is per We know the correlation is zero because it's a completely random vector. It looks at like 64%. Do it again, negative 0.04, negative 22, uh, negative 27, 17. So, uh, of course, uh, the sample is 18, so it's not very large. Uh, you're likely to encounter a uh, lot of spurious correlation there. Let's do a, a larger test, say data one equal table of this and do it a thousand times and we do here bar chart data one you're going to see from bar chart data one it runs okay look at the correlations it's all over the map and we know that they are completely um, independent <laughs> okay you should know it should be zero so what we are observing here is spurious correlation and of course a researcher can keep looking and uh, he will find something with the distribution of the maximum of uh, a random variable which is a, a correlation and uh, can write a paper uh, about it and 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 then subsequently uh, prove a point uh, get on twitter uh, promote it uh, uh, get discussed by steven pinker and then get into maybe some secondary journal <coughs> or maybe some first rate one uh, we know that uh, about half the research that you read at least half the research is nonsense for similar reasons for this reason something related to p value which is quite similar so and of course if we have here uh, 48 variables you're going to see the distribution of correlation is going to be um, a little more compressed around a zero, but nevertheless, still it exhibits some randomness. Okay, so this is the story. Now, so this is the paper. Uh, technically, I looked at it, uh, let x1, x1 through xn um, and uh, y1 through yn be independent Gaussian. Now, why independent Gaussian? Because um, it doesn't change much to the story. Uh, and uh, it's, I've discussed it elsewhere. Um, <laughs> As long as you're in a family of distribution that have non-fat tails, uh, the story doesn't change much. <laughs> then I, I then I derived it uh, in the paper. I derived from scratch and discovered that thanks to Mathematica, or thanks to the techniques we have in uh, knowing. If you see here, we have um, a, a, a hyper uh, geometric function, and we have the ability to work with functions that people did not at the time. And I realized that my, my derivation was considerably um, at variance for small n, and, and n of 18 that we had there was small n, um, at variance with that of the, the most common one was, I think, the Hoteling review of a uh, of uh, a discussion of something that was derived principally in 1915, more than 100 years ago, by Fisher. And the distribution he has uh, compresses to something that is an approximation. Visibly, the math they used at a time they produced excellent results given their tools. But we can be a lot more uh, can be a lot more uh, uh, precise today, uh, thanks to um, our special uh, knowledge of special functions. Special functions aren't really functions; uh, they're uh, powerful uh, approximation tools, and they are computer heavy. But now, instantly, you can get results. So the so I worked. <laughs> Uh, more technically, uh, with step zero, where, okay, the correlation is this, rho n equals uh, this, the product of the two uh, Gaussians divided by, of case, the square root of the square of the sums, um, uh, a product of square root of the square of the sums. So you have a lot of steps to derive the distribution. Uh, the first step, I derive the distribution of, of the numerator. And the numerator is rather easy because it's pretty much the Bessel function, and we know it's a Bessel function. Um, and uh, but, but I derived it, you know, uh, simply. It's, it's not a big deal. If the numerator is not a big deal. <laughs> you also, uh, I also did something that typically mathematicians don't do, but I do it systematically, is to figure out if the numerator and denominator are independent. And effectively, they become independent, or they are independent. Or, you know, if they're not independent, it's not detectable. And uh, I've done, done it here, verify that uh, Z100, which is Z is the top, and, and W at the bottom, W100, are independent by Monte Carlo simulation using all the measures of independence, Kendall Tau, Spearman Rho, Spearman Rho, uh, 
regular correlation and Hofding. Uh, the, so, so these four measures visibly show us pretty much that we proceed with independence of numerator and denominator. And that was critical. From there, I had a lot of steps. Step one, uh, visibly distribution of numerators. Step two, distribution of denominator. Uh, square. A square is very easy because we're dealing with product of two chi-squares. And, um, and then I have to take the square root of that. Okay, then I have distribution of the denominator, which, as we said, was independent. And distribution of the ratio, the ratio distribution, gives me something that gives very precise numbers matched by Monte Carlo, of course, for, uh, small, um, for small n and large. What you have in blue here is the derivation by Fisher uh, and later uh, Hotling. Um, uh, the, the, my my uh, uh, brown one is uh, my exact distribution. And as you see, they converge for n. Uh, this is n of 4, this is n of 10, and this is n of 144. So we have a distribution, but that's not the big deal. The big deal now is the data hacking, because now you need the distribution of the maximum uh, correlation that you observe among n variables. I have n variables, I have the maximum correlation. What is it? Uh, I've derived it here. Uh, I also derived incidentally the maximum absolute correlation, but uh, which even uh, you know shows more biases um, because you know you can you can select a correlation that's the largest in absolute terms, the correlation of 0.9 or negative 0.9 gives you information <laughs> and and allows you to publish a paper. And, and this is, well, this is the app, uh, the, the small app. This is D is a number of variables I'm comparing, start with four. And as I'm increasing variables, look, and I have n of 38, <laughs> look how the distribution of my maximum correlation, I have this, and, and you see probability of exceeding in correlation of 0.4 is quite significant when you have that many variables. And of course, if we have, uh, if we have only 18, 18 data points per variable, which is very common, much more common than you think, um, then, then look at this distribution of, of, uh, uh, of distribution of the maximum. So this gives a, tells us, really, if you look into the numbers, that when you hear correlation, you need to be very careful because a lot of correlations are not really correlation. They're not. The, they are the sample correlation, that exact sample correlation. They are not representative of the correlation of what one call, can call the generator or the ensemble or the phenomenon. <laughs> That's phase one. Now what happens, and this to me, this is not technical contribution because I think all I've done is uh, nitpick over uh, historical uh, things being done, is here is <laughs> what I've done is something with fat tails. It's much more complicated, but <coughs> when you look at something called the Wigner effect uh, for eigenvalues, uh, the problem gets accentuated with fat tails. <coughs> Let me stop here. Uh, I probably will have a mini MOOC on um, on dimensionality and fat tails because why under fat tails uh, you you're going to be fooled definitely by correlation, fooled by regression. The distribution we saw for correlation is going to be much more spurious because look at that. You're talking about a product, Pearson correlation, this, by the way, not, uh, I mean, there may be other measures of correlation. You're dealing with a product X and Y. And the product, of course, <laughs> if you're dealing with power laws with higher moment non existing, uh, that product will be very unstable. Even ratio by, 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 uh, by its squares. So uh, something called the dimensionality uh, problem, uh, there's something called we, that we know rather well called the Wigner effect, which is the spuriousness of correlation but and, and seen in higher dimensions. So we talk about eigenvalues of matrices. Uh, how, how the problem gets compounded with fat tails. <laughs> this is how the, the, the eigenvalues line up under thin tails, this is how they line up under fat tails. So really, I mean, we're comparing here the one on the left to the one on the right. You see it is much more severe. So thank you for listening to me. Have an excellent uh, weekend. It's a weekend. <laughs> it's start, weekend starting. And, uh, and uh, talk to you soon. This is, today is October, I think, 21, uh, 2016.